Hello everybody, Joey the Truth Wagner with you. Welcome into the Truth Serum. And everybody, the 2020 NFL Draft is over. So I want to go over and review the picks for the Pittsburgh Steelers this year. But everybody, before I get into those picks, the video tonight is being brought to you by SeatGeek. When the sports are back, and hopefully for football season, it can be as normal as possible. When, but when the football is back, SeatGeek is the place you want to get your tickets. Great seats, great price. Can't get any better than that. But it is even better, because if you use the code Joey Wagner, you'll get $20 off your first order. So let's get into it, everybody. The Pittsburgh Steelers 2020 NFL Draft Review. So everybody, the Steelers made six picks in this year's draft a second round pick, a third round pick, two fourths, a sixth, and a seventh. So let's get into it. I'll start with the second round pick, everybody. Chase Claypool, the wide receiver, out of Notre Dame. That was a little bit of a interesting predicament there, as I thought the Steelers would go running back. I really did. I thought the Steelers would go running back in the second round. I thought that was their biggest need to get a star impact player from day one by a mile. But the Steelers did not go running back, even though, even though they had J.K. Dobbins fall right in, in their lap at the 49th pick. He was still around. And to pick Chase Claypool there was a shock. It was a shock to me. But everybody, Chase Claypool, he is an athlete. He is the definition. You look up the word athlete in the dictionary, you're going to find Chase Claypool. Big, fast, strong, physical. 6'4", 238 pounds, runs a 4'4", 40-yard dash, 40-inch vertical. Big Ben going to be very happy with this pick because he has a... Threat at wide receiver. Has a threat at wide receiver. Can be a deep threat, a red zone threat, a threat for Big Ben that will help out the offense. I would have went J.K. Dobbins and a running back with a second round pick. Got the wide receiver later. But the Steelers got Chase Claypool. I'd say the second round pick... With Claypool, him, himself, I'd say it's a B-grade pick. But because they passed on Dobbins and got Claypool instead, I'll bump that down to a B-. minus. Okay, let's go to the third round. The Steelers got Alex Highsmith, the edge rusher from Charlotte. Uh, from what I've only read good things about him, uh, Dabo Sweeney. The Clemson head coach had very good things to say a, a, a about him. He said that when we played Charlotte, he was the best player on the field for them by a mile. Had 14 sacks, uh, can come in, contribute on special teams, be the reserve backup outside linebacker to T.J. Watt and Bud Dupree. Could he be a future replacement for Bud Dupree if they don't sign him long term? We'll see. We'll see. This was a name that I did not hear of in all of the, the pre-draft things that were going on. I'll give the Alex Highsmith pick a C+. Plus. C+. Plus. But let's move on to the fourth round, everybody. Fourth round pick, the first one, was the running back Anthony McFarland Jr. out of Maryland. Very fast. The name of the game for McFarlane is Speed, runs a 4-4, four, 4-4 four. Four, four speed, can catch the ball out of the backfield, different type of running back, a change of pace when you compare them to the, to, to the power running backs that the Steelers have of James Conner and Benny Snell. Complete change of pace can be that third down back, can return kicks on special teams. Jalen Samuels, but faster. Don't be surprised if Jalen Samuels might be on his way out with this pick with Anthony McFarland. I'll give this pick a B. 
it would be I'd give it a higher grade, but the Steelers wouldn't have drafted running back here if they would have got J.K. Dobbins in the second round. Pick number 135, the second fourth round pick for the Steelers. They got guard Kevin Dotson out of Louisiana Lafayette. This is a pick I really like at this part of the draft. Excellent run blocker. Strong. Has a little bit of bite to him. His floor is a backup depth interior offensive lineman. And his upside is a starter. Again, was a four-year starter in college. Has a high football IQ. This is a really good value pick for the Steelers in the fourth round. And he's also a hoot on social media, if you haven't found it yet. But uh, Kevin Dotson, I'd give that an A- minus pick for the fourth round of the draft. Let's go on to the sixth round pick. That is safety Anton Brooks Jr., also out of Maryland. So uh, Mike Tomlin was getting all of the intel from his son, who goes to Maryland. As the Steelers drafted two, Mar two Maryland players in this draft, uh... Brooks, uh, he, in this draft, he was the best safety against the run. In pass coverage, you don't want him in pass coverage. But you want Brooks as a downhill, near the line of scrimmage safety who can pop somebody and stop the run. He can be that hybrid role, that hybrid linebacker safety sub package against the run. That's a B plus, A minus B plus pick in my opinion. Decent value for the sixth round. And now the last pick to round seven. The Steelers got defensive tackle Carlos Davis out of Nebraska. The talent is there from what I've read. The talent is there. He just has to be coached up on his technique. At worst, interior depth defensive lineman. Best case scenario can be the nose tackle. Like I said, everybody, from what I read, his talent is through the roof. He just has to work on his hand placement and his technique to use his big body and his talents better. I'd give that pick B to B+. Plus. So there you have it, everybody. That's my overall thoughts on the Steelers 2020 NFL Draft. So there were some picks that I really liked like the Kevin Donson pick and the Anthony Mc, McFarland pick. There were picks that I thought were okay, like the Chase Claypool pick and the Anton Brooks pick. Uh, everybody, uh, overall, I'd give the Steelers overall on the whole draft a B- minus grade for the draft. They got depth at positions that they needed it at. They needed offensive line depth. Check that. Defensive line depth. Check that box. Secondary depth. Got that. Got more running back depth. Wide receiver depth. Pass rusher depth. They all got depth for the team which was needed. So this draft checked all of the needs boxes for the Steelers. Everybody, to be honest, my least favorite part of their draft this year is that they had J.K. Dobbins right there at the 49th pick, and they didn't take him. It was such an obvious pick to me that I can't believe they didn't make it. I pray and I hope that Chase Claypool turns out to be this 6'4 deep threat star, so it takes the sting out of J.K. Dobbins going to the Ravens six picks later. But everybody, we'll see how it goes. Overall, I think the Steelers did okay with the draft. I'll give them a solid B-. So, everybody, I hope you enjoyed my thoughts on the Steelers' 2020 NFL Draft. As always, uh, leave your comments below. What did you think of the Steelers' draft? You like it, not like it, hate it? Which picks do you think are home runs? Picks you think are going to be bust? Or somewhere in between? Want to read those comments? As always, please like the video, please click that like button, and subscribe to the channel. And everybody, this week, Steelers wise, I'll be talking about uh, the schedule release coming out. I might release a mock schedule. 
for the Steelers this year. We'll see what goes on, but make sure you're here for that. As always, everybody, I hope you have a great week. Thank you so much for tuning in. Stay safe out there. Make sure you wear gloves, mask, social distance. Keep all of us safe. God bless and signing off for the Truth Serum, Joey the Truth Web.